The pastor better have a bullet, right? So, uh, good morning and uh, welcome. Uh, God's blessings to uh, each and every one of you as we once again are privileged to uh, gather in the uh, Lord's house uh, this morning. And uh, we once again pray uh, blessings upon you, whether you're joining us online or here in person. And if you are a guest or visitor, we welcome you in the name of Christ. Uh, I do uh, have an announcement before we get started this morning. Uh, Tony has not been uh, feeling well. She's had a a, uh, sinus uh, infection for quite a while. And she was exposed at work uh, with the virus. Now, her and I have been living apart for the last uh, week. I've had the downstairs. She's had the upstairs. Uh, She just found out this morning uh, that she did test positive. But I want you to know that uh, I have tested negative. And the reason I know that is because tomorrow I have a colonoscopy. (laughs) And um, so (laughs) it's been quite a week in our house. Uh, We had a bike stolen election night out of our garage. Anyway, uh, I know all of you have had your own challenges as well. Uh, Our life's not any different than yours. Uh, But so that we err on the side of caution, even though I am negative, this morning the elders will distribute uh, Holy Communion. Uh, And uh, if anyone feels uncomfortable coming up, I certainly understand that. Uh, I will stay back. I will uh, do the dismissal, uh, but I will do it from back here so that I do not get close to anyone. Uh, I've been wearing my mask all week at home. I've been adding the mask every day. Uh, Yesterday, I think I had three masks on. So I'm just trying to get to uh, my colonoscopy tomorrow healthy. And uh, so uh, Tony is at home. And like I said, we have been apart for the uh, last week. Does anyone have any questions or concerns? All right. I will conduct worship today. I know we have our voters meeting. Uh, I will be here for that. I will not go into the narthex. Uh, I will just stay up in this uh, general area uh, just to uh, ease anyone's mind that is uh, here today. But uh, the thing I was thinking about yesterday is even as we have all these things going on in our world and the crazy week that we had, uh, it is a privilege to come into the Lord's house to worship together. Uh, this hour is so important to me and to you as well, and I'm uh, glad that we can be together to hear God's word, to be strengthened by his word and sacrament, and uh, let us praise his name. Our order of worship will be the divine service setting number one on page 151. Our opening hymn is 464, and we will stand on the last one.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our intro for this day is centered in your worship folder, Psalm 70, and the congregational tune is LSB 717. Told you so. But I am poor and needy, O oh God, my Savior. I need you now.
destroy the works of the devil and to make us your children and heirs of eternal life. When he comes again with power, make us like him, for we shall see him as he is, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 to 24. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord! Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light, as if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feast, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the feast of offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs, to the melody of your hearts I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. We will join together in reading the epistle lesson on the back of your worship folder, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, and then following the reading, we'll rise and sing the Alleluia verse on page 156. We read together, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise.
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Today's full service based on our message for this morning is our Old Testament lesson from Amos 5, 18 to 24, Dear Friends of Christ. Do you ever think about who set the standards? I mean, who set the standard for the type of fuel our vehicles would need? Or who decided how much weight a wall can bear so that buildings don't crash down? Who set the standard for furnaces and air conditioners and refrigerators and that plane that you want to ride in? I thought about all this because, as I said earlier, tomorrow I go in for a colonoscopy. So who came up with this common procedure to get ready and then perform this medical deed? You see, the last time I had this done six years ago, anesthesia was administered for the 20 to 30 minutes the procedure took. Now, I've always wondered, who allowed themselves to be knocked out with this type of medicine the first time so that all the rest of us had a standard? I picture this at the pharmaceutical company. Jones, hop up on the table and we'll give you a dose. Hope to see you when you wake up. Aren't you glad we don't set the standards? For the things that I've mentioned, we don't. But aren't there times that we have our self-conceit standards and people that are fall in line? Or we tell God what his standards should be? It's the Old Testament from Amos, and we wonder, what is the standard? Now Israel has a problem in our text. They were smug in their estimation that they were achieving a great standard of godliness. They looked forward to the day of the Lord. It would be a good thing because they were pleasing to God and their standard of living proved However, Israel's standards were self-made. They were failing miserably to achieve God's standard. His standard is perfect obedience to His holy law. They were going to experience judgment and not the blessings they expected. Now they thought that their worship was pleasing to God. But Amos tells them their heart is not into it. They lack justice and humility. And now no matter how orthodox the ritual or how fine the music was, the worship was a hypocritical sham. Corrupt worship would lead to corrupt living. Are we in tune with God's standard for these New Testament times? Jesus has established our worship. He comes with abundant blessings of life and forgiveness and salvation. The standard was set in baptism, in absolution, in his word. In Holy Communion. Too many times we think we can worship apart from these means of grace. Why can't I commune with God on the golf course of the lake? I can receive His forgiveness while shopping or on vacation. The Word is always available. So what if my mind is on how quick we can get out of here today? I've been baptized. Doesn't that seal my faith for a number of years? Shouldn't I get a medal or some sort of recognition for my steadfastness in worship? You see, what we do here on Sunday morning, the divine service, is not something to click off your list. God has established this eternal blessing so you're Faith can grow. Right worship leads to right living. Let justice 
roll down like waters, Amos says, and righteousness like an everlasting stream. You see, God's people produce justice like the flow of a river. Animals and plants need water to survive. We need the gift of worship so that our faith can grow and be strengthened. The standard for us is Jesus. Jesus is the exact reversal of everything Amos warns you concerning the day of the Lord. Repent of less than honest worship. Repent of trying to set your own standards. Repent of the corrupt living that comes from corrupt worship. Repent and rejoice. Rejoice that on the cross, God's justice poured out His wrath on Jesus. Justice was served. Every sin was punished. God's justice rolled over Christ so that His righteousness flows to you. You have been baptized into the death of Jesus. You have been baptized into the resurrection of Jesus. The waters flow down from Jesus to you. And they roll down from you to your neighbor. A new man daily emerges to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. The next time you drive a car or you go to the top of a tall building or you have surgery or you fly in a plane, thank God for the standards that are set. They are meant to protect you and I. The Lord has put us in the shelter of His wings. And He protects us from sin and death and the power of the devil. Evil cannot overcome the standard, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise. We will confess our faith now. We'll do that in the words of the Nicene Creed. That's on page 158. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not many, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for their mission of sin. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, now, the prayer of the church, I will once again 
I will finish each petition with the words, let us pray to the Lord. Please respond, Lord have mercy. Lord, you are our help and deliver. And to you, we bring the prayers and petitions of your people. So you may grant to us all good things, needful. Guard us against all things evil and harmful. That the Lord would rule over the darkness and shine his light over all the earth. That those from many nations be, may be united as one people through baptism and live together in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the Lord would grant us wisdom and courage that we may be prepared at all times to receive him when he comes in his glory and that we may not be distracted by earthly glory that fade away, or disillusioned by earthly disappointments which will come to an end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. That the Lord would give aid and comfort to the sick, the suffering, and those in their last days. That he may grant healing according to his will and strength to bear up under the weight of loneliness or affliction. We pray especially this morning for Steve Davis, who had a fall and broke his neck in three separate places. He may have to be undergoing surgery. We pray that if he undergoes surgery, Lord, you would be with the doctors. You would give them the hands and the skill that they would be able to stabilize Steve's neck, and you would help him to recover. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, we pray for our national election that we had this past week. We are so privileged to live in this country where we can vote. We thank you for that privilege. And we also thank you and we pray that you would be with the results of the election going forward, that everything would be peaceful. We know once again, Lord, that everything is in your hands, that your will will be done. And we just pray, Lord, that you would remind us you are Lord of all, no matter what happens as we move forward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray this morning, Lord, both for Pastor John Bainey, who is the pastor of Trinity in El Paso, and we also pray for the congregation at St. Paul's Lutheran in Lexington. Pastor Bainey currently has two calls, one to Wisconsin and one to Illinois. And St. Paul's Lexington has called Pastor Christopher Leeski from Minnesota to be their pastor. Please be with both of these men as they, they consider these calls. Give them wisdom in making their decisions. And whatever is decided, may it be the right decision not, not only for the congregations that they serve, but for the congregations they have been called to. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will continue our worship now with the service of the sacrament of preface on page 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who out of his love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are, blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created. And since your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior, with repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gather in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
God the Father, the fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness has your only God Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Uh, we will reconvene uh, back here in the sanctuary. Also, I want to say to those of you online, uh, I sent out both the uh, slate of candidates and the budget. We would also like your participation. A uh, few people have already voted uh, by email. And we, uh, in this week of election, we don't want to disenfranchise anyone. And uh, so uh, we do encourage you that those of you online, please join us. I will have my phone. Uh, please text my number, 838-0306, for your vote. And we will make sure that you get counted. I know there's a lot going on. It's been a crazy week for me. And I know for many of you as well. Does anyone have any questions about anything that I have just said? All right. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thank you all. God bless.